about to go and look at three of the main climbs from stage 16, 198 kilometers from Po to Bagnet de Luchon. Starting with the Col d'Orbis, going to head on to the Col de Tourmalet, and finally the Col de Perisor, and that all-important descent into the finish. That intermediate sprint coming at around 26 kilometers into the stage, there's every chance that the bunch could be together at the start of this first climb of the day, the Col d'Orbis. This first climb of the day, it's not the highest one that they're going to go up, but it's still a tough one. One thing to consider for today's stage is that it does come after a rest day. So sometimes it can be difficult to tell exactly how your body and your legs are going to respond the day after that. Sometimes you'll hear riders talking about having blocked legs. And what that means is, having done so much racing already, your body goes into a massive repair mode on a rest day. And it's for that reason, a lot of the rides will have been out for up to three hours, maybe with some efforts, especially the day after being in the mountains. There are a few notable examples of riders cracking. One is Claudio Cuyapucci in 1990, when the day after a rest day, he effectively lost the race to Greg Le Mans. Well, at this point in the race, only five stages separating the riders from that final finish line in Paris. Three of those are going to have a bearing on the GC. This stage, in stage 17, both in the high mountains of the Pyrenees and that all-important last long time trial on stage 19. It's the last chance for the fewer climbers to get a buffer over the likes of Wiggins and Paddle Evans. And actually, this stage, since we've seen the second attack the tour this year, which gives the amateur riders a chance to ride over the same road as the pros do. Just an hour ago at the foot of this climb, it was 30 degrees and sunny. I'm here at the top now, the clouds have all started rolling in. It's only about five degrees. And that doesn't really affect the riders when they're climbing up because they're producing a lot of heat. But as soon as you start going down the other side, I think it's 70 kilometers an hour, you soon start to get cold. So you'll see a few of the guys taking extra clothing from their swan years. It stops the wind going onto the chest. Well, I've just reached the foot of the Col de Tourmalet, the second mountain of the day's stage. This one goes up to 2,115 metres above sea level, which is the highest point in this year's race. 19 kilometres long, 7.4% average gradient. This is one of the most historical climbs on the Tour de France. It's been used 47 times before. In fact, Astana's Yanni Brakovic said that when the Tour visited this climb back in 2010, it was one of the hardest stages he's ever ridden. You can see some major changes, not just on the GC, but also competition for the polka dot jersey of best climber with two all category two first category climbs only stage 11 has more points on offer back in 2010 when i raced the tour de france i actually tackled this climb from both directions on two separate stages the second time i came up at this direction it's the last mountain of the race by that point i was in the group Eto. Could be a time for some of the pure climbers to make a do or die effort. A little bit like Andy Schleck did last year, on the stage which finished up the Galibier. Let's go on one of the earlier mountains, try and get a big time gap earlier on, and put the yellow jersey into some trouble. <laughs> And three kilometers from the top, and the final climb of the day, now the colder parasol. As you can see, the weather conditions have taken a real turn for the worse. If the pros face anything like this, it could turn into a really epic day. Just wondering if the likes of Nibali just attack towards the top here and take advantage of that long 16 kilometer descent into town for the finish. Finally reached the finish line here in Bagnier de Luchon. At this point, the pros will have covered 198 kilometres. We've just covered the three main points of the stage. It's still been a long day in the saddle and made even longer by a fairly extreme change in the weather conditions. 30 degrees there at the start, 
the top of the last climb here is a little over five degrees and a very cold and wet descent here to the finish. <laughs> 